Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like making a bunch of money, subscribe to the channel, I can help you do that. Give me a thumbs up, leave comments below if you guys have any comments about anything. I'm here to help you guys invest through hard times. I am investing right alongside with you, you know, right alongside, you know the ticker symbols that I own, I'll share that later, maybe not in this clip, but I'll show y'all what I own. And I'm here holding on diamond hands. I'm showing you charts and I want you to get a little bit more information on how, on how billionaires invest. So let's go to this presentation on how billionaires invest. I'm going to show you how billionaires invest and give you my opinion. I'm going to, I'm going to just do two examples here. So what billionaires do, what they do is they identify value first. They cost average into what they know. They, they know it has value. They know a certain sector and they cost average in when it's low. They don't worry about short-term price movements. They're there for the big moves. They're there to invest for the long-term big gains. And I'm gonna give you an example of John Goff and his Contango investment. I am invested in Contango. It was a video that I did. Uh, you can look at my previous videos. I did a video on Contango going over their presentation. They were at 180 million market cap. And I thought that was absolutely crazy. And John, uh, John's on the board. And he is loading up his company, buying and accumulating assets, uh, taking over companies, buying up properties uh, for Contango at the bottom of the market. So I'm going to show you what he's done and how he's cost averaged into Contango, his company. I'm going to call it his because he owns about a 30% stake in it. How he managed his, his cost averaging into uh, Contango. So here's how billionaires invest. This is what he did. Going, I'm going to start at the bottom and work way, work my way up to the most recent accumulations. So he was accumulating. His first accumulation was in June 4th, 2018, and he accumulated for $4.20 a share. He was accumulating shares between 2018 and 2021 between $0.91 cents a share and $6 a share. And you can see he accumulated four times in 2018. He accumulated six times in 2019. And then I broke out his accumulations in 2020. He accumulated for 327, June 11th, October 27th. Funny that this is October 27th. That is the exact day that I purchased Contango shares. It was October 22nd or 27th at $1.34 a share is when I purchased it. Exact day and price I bought. December 22nd, I accumulated, or he accumulated at $2.35. January 22nd, 2021, accumulated at $2.76. So he's cost averaging in. And I want you to, I want to show you something here. This is reporting him. This is one of his cost average positions here. And this is the theoretical performance if you bought the security on the day that he filed this release of when he purchased it. So he, he was up 4% in one day performance, performance of five days, was 22%, one month, 20%, six months minus 24, one year, he was down 61% with a max loss of that time period of minus 63% over a 250 day holding period. So he was down 63% on his investment with this one particular investment that I'm showing you and, 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 and sharing with you. Now this is, Contango's chart, this is when he was cost averaging in, was from this point to this point, all through this entire area here. So he was, if he cost averaged in up here, which he did, he was way down here. But I know he cost averaged on this day of 91 cents. But he he was cost averaging in this entire time period. And that's how billionaires do it. They don't they don't look at, you know, he bought here. He was probably buying into strength and it probably looked pretty good. And then it, it reversed on him. And the ratio in this time frame of oil to gold was cheap the entire time. So he was right on his approach. He is right in buying all through here. Now, he his timing, and you can never get the timing perfect, but he was buying it through this entire period, cost averaging in for four or five years, probably is what he's going to be cost averaging in through here. He probably might do it until 2022 or something because it's so cheap and the ratio says to buy. And he was down on his investments. So if you guys get down on your investments, don't get down. Be smart about it. If the value is still there, continue to cost average in. 
Load up when it's cheap because the bull market's coming. It hasn't come yet. And if you're cost averaging in and you're buying it when the ratio is at around 30 and above, I mean, you are getting an absolute steal here. It's a steal. John knows this. Mr. Goff knows that it's a steal and that's why he's cost averaging in and buying so much of this company. I'm going to give you another company here, which a lot of people are familiar with, is Eric Sprott. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that he shares a lot of his picks uh, on YouTube. His approach is a little different than John. Uh, he took major stakes in a whole bunch of different exploration companies. Uh, they're mainly in the, in the precious metals sectors. He has many companies that he spread his money out. His stakes range from 5 to 20% for most of the companies. He took the approach to spread it out amongst a bunch. And I think his approach is that a few will hit. And he does a lot of research in it and says, you know what? They got X amount in the ground. They have the potential to find a lot more. I got to get my money in there uh, because if they hit it, I'm going to make massive amounts of money. And most of his investments are in silver companies. A lot of them are. That, that I At least that I follow. And he's got many companies. He's got a lot of companies in his portfolio. And you got to remember, these guys cannot trade in and out like we can. These They can't just trade in and out of positions. They have to do filings. They're large stakeholders in the company. They can't just trade in and out. And they've been accumulating positions over the years. They see value and they position for the big move. They see inflation and currency risk if you listen to their interviews and you read uh, articles on them. They all see inflation problems and currency risk going forward. Uh, And what they do to protect their wealth is they look at the value and the value creation for their shareholders uh, and the companies that they're in. They look for that value, whether it's gold, silver, oil, or whatever uh, other commodity they have. So what I think we need to do is look at this presentation I put together, look at the video, take that information in and say, look, these guys, they're cost averaging in for a year or two or three years. I did the same thing with platinum, with silver, with some of the companies I own, I'm cost averaging in over time. I'm trying to get, whenever the value is there, whenever that ratio is cheap, I just continue to cost average in. And right now, what I'm looking at uh, is oil. I'm looking at uranium. I'm looking at silver. I'm looking at platinum. I'm looking at even royalty companies, gold royalty companies. I'm looking at some of the mining companies that are out there. I'm looking at tin, zinc, nickel, copper. Guys, these, these things are so cheap right now. I see the, the wave of inflation coming. We've got real estate that is positioned prime like it has before all of the other bull markets in commodities. Everything's aligned here. I, and, and you know what? It's even worse to the downside, the ratios, because of COVID and all these other problems. So we need to look at this differently. This isn't about a new investor looking at it and saying, hey, look, I'm down 20, 30, 40% on my position. You need to say, look, these are the companies that are going to that are going to really win it for me in the next five to ten years. I need to look at this from that perspective. I need to cost average in when these shares get cheaper, because the cheaper I can get my cost average and basis down, the more I'm going to make overall uh, on my investments. That's how these billionaires look at it. That's how I look at it. Uh, I've had to change my paradigm. It takes it takes you a little while to change this. Join this channel. Look at some of my videos and ride this commodity bull market up with me and all of the other people on this channel uh, that we have a community with. Join us, let's ride it up together and let's help each other ride this thing higher. If you're a new investor, I know it takes some time. A lot of things are gonna be confusing. They were very confusing for me in the beginning. I'm trying to help everyone become rock solid on their investments, rock solid on their holdings, where you can hold through these big volatility sell-offs, moves, Don't worry, the volatility is going to be there. You're going to see some down movements and you're going to see some down uh, positions in your portfolio. And what I'm doing is I'm cost averaging in, trying to get my average down, get it as cheap as I can. I want lower prices and I want them to stay down so I can keep cost averaging in before this bull market comes. And I think a wave of inflation will eventually come. I think some of it's already here. That's why we're seeing bond yield go up. They see the inflation. They see it coming. Don't get faked out of these positions. We've seen gold kind of 
drop out, it will come back. It may take some time. Do what the billionaires are doing. Cost average in. We know this is coming. It's going to come a year or two or three down, wherever. Maybe it's six months. Maybe it's two months. I don't know the exact timing. We know it's coming. We're buying in the ratio, the low, when the ratios tell us to buy and we, and we buy these very undervalued sectors, we know the money's rotated out already. These things are typically heavily shorted. And when you get in there, it's going to be volatile as heck because we're going into the high volatility areas where the returns are going to be ridiculous over this next five to 10 years. So we got to hold on. We cost average in. We know we're in the right. And we just got to wait. And, and it'll come. And when it comes, it's going to be a big move. I'm here to help you guys. I'm doing the same thing. I'm seeing down positions in some of my uh, most recent purchases. I'm not worried. I'm continuing to cost average in because I got the big picture macro right. At least that's the way I'm viewing it. And even if we have a short-term little blip where we, where we have a, a fallout or something, even though the market doesn't say we're going to have a fallout yet, I don't see it in bonds. I don't see anybody rushing to bonds. Uh, I, I think if there is that, I'm going to continue to cost average in. That's how I'm playing it. If you guys want to join this channel, please join the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave comments below if you guys have any questions on anything. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.